Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inside Artesian Basketball here on WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined as always by Artesian head basketball coach Kip Staggs. We've got a lot to talk about here on this week's edition of Inside Artesian Basketball. We'll take a look back at the Artesians weekend last weekend with games against Greenwood and Columbus North, and we'll look ahead to the Artesians Mid-State Conference contest on Friday against the Plainfield Quakers. First, though, we will take a look at the Greenwood, the Mid-State Conference opener on Friday night at Greenwood High School. We talked about it last week, Coach, and said that we felt that Greenwood would probably come out with a good initial push, have a lot of, of uh, energy, probably a new-look gym, a new coach. Kind of the opposite, though. You guys really were ready for anything they were going to come out with and got off to a really good start against the Woodman on Friday night. Well, I, we really did. We came out and jumped out 7-0 to zero and, and really had a, a, a strong defensive presence to start the game. And matter of fact, the, their first possession, uh, we're very active in the post and we've got good ball pressure and they get called for a moving screen and then we come down and score. And, but... Uh, you know, we just really came out with a, a strong presence and took us, established ourselves in the game early. And then uh, as you look at the first quarter, I uh, really felt like there was a couple of plays that, that went against us. Uh, you know, one of their kids stepped out of bounds and then they hit a three on the same possession. Uh, they traveled in front of us, uh, in front of our bench, it wasn't called. And, but so instead of us uh, being up maybe 17 to 10, 17 to 11 or 12, it was 17 to 16. But you know, we were in the hunt. We uh, played really well in that first quarter and uh, did a lot of good things. Second quarter of play comes up. You were up 17 to 16. You come right out of the bat. You hit a three pointer to start things off. Things are looking good. Then Greenwood was able to go on a little bit of a run of their own there in that second quarter of play. They did. They were able to knock some shots down, and we were still working uh, to uh, assess our zone and what we were doing there. And, and they had made a change offensively with what they were doing. And, and we didn't pick up on it quickly enough. And so they were able to, to make some shots. And then and we just hit a dry spell there to in the mid part of that second quarter. But, you know, we went from 17 points in the first quarter to nine points in the, in the second quarter. And we just need to find a few more baskets through that. You come out in the third quarter of play after the halftime uh, locker room. And you come out, it looked like coming out that Tyler was maybe uh, limping a little bit or had, was nursing a little bit of, of some sort of energy. So his, his effectiveness wasn't as, as much as... I'm sure that you guys would have liked if he was at 100%, but that third quarter play, they hit a couple threes, got up on you guys by, I think, 10, but to your credit, you guys come roaring right back there toward the end of the third quarter of play. Well, yeah, absolutely. Our guys, uh, we found ourselves down 42 to 32, and, and Tyler was struggling with an ankle injury there that he suffered in the first half, and he played through it in the second half. And then, uh, but our guys got on a roll. Uh, you know, we got... Uh, a couple baskets to go in, a three to go in. We got to the rim. We uh, opened up the court a little bit, and we find ourselves ahead 45-44 going into the fourth. You move into the fourth quarter of play then. It's kind of back and forth the game is. Uh, you guys got down, tried to foul, coming back late, had some calls one way or the other, an intentional foul call, but just couldn't quite get over the hump there at the end of the contest. Well, our, our effort was tremendous for the whole night, and you know, as you mentioned, we just found ourselves a possession or two behind. The Monkhouse kid hit a couple threes in the in the third quarter, hit one in the fourth quarter. We did a better job of finding him late, and uh, you know, we we had our opportunities for sure. It's 57-54 with a minute 14 to go, and we just made a basket, and then uh, we had a, a tough call go against us, and then all of a sudden it's 60 to 54. And uh, then we turned it over on the very next possession, and, and we just really f didn't find any more rhythm after that point. Greenwood gets the win. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the contest on a Friday night between Martinsville and the Greenwood Woodman. Well, here we are in the first quarter, and, and we'd ran a little uh, pick-the-picker action, and Reed got loose and found uh, Beaver there on the backside for, a, for an open three. And here's an offensive rebound put back by Jackson. And Jackson, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a lunch pail guy, and here he is knocking that three down, and he's just been a, a solid performer for us uh, just about all year. And, you know, here's Tyler getting in the paint, kicking it to Reed in the corner for a three, and here's an offensive rebound by uh, Luke putting it back in. And so we're playing pretty well right through here. Again, we had a couple calls. Here's at the very end of the quarter. We run a little uh, uh, baseline out-of-bounds play and executed it very well. Here we go in the second quarter, and, and Damon finds uh, – 
uh, Eli on the left wing to knock it down. And, you know, they pressed us the whole game, but the press really didn't bother us too much. Here's an example. Andy, uh, Ma Andy Myers, one of our sophomores, finds a, a seam and he gets in the paint. And then, uh, you know, Luke's very good at pulling up from 14, 15 feet, and that's a good example of it right there. Uh, Reed drives it to the paint, draws the defender, and Jonathan's able to knock a three down. And then uh, here we go with Tyler making a, a dribble drive. Tyler has a good sense about where he's out on the floor, and he's a really good passer. There's another example of it right there where he finds Jackson on the slip on an out-of-bounds play. Luke with a defensive steal and a, and a basket made. And, you know, we're, this is where we're bound our way back. You know, we found ourselves in a hole, and here's Reed driving to the rim and, and finishing. And, and here we go again, a little bit more of an open court scene. And Reed gets to the wing and finds uh, Luke on the weak side and able to knock that shot down right there at the end of the quarter. So we really played well during that stretch. But then Greenwood uh, gets a lead, and, it, you know, we traded baskets a little bit. We just couldn't get enough stops when we needed it. Here's Jackson on a flare on the top to knock it down and to tie it up. And we just, from that point forward, it was just a possession game, uh, battling inside, uh, put back basket. And we honestly just came up a little bit short. Our effort was great. Um, our intensity was fantastic. Our focus was uh, superb. And uh, we just, like I said, came up a little short. Very pleased with the effort. And as I told the guys, um, even on Monday, you know, we're a few possessions away from being undefeated right now. So uh, don't get down about things. Let's get better at what we need to do. And, uh, you know, you're talking about a basketball team there at Greenwood that they've had, you know, they're, they've got three or four guys that played 60, 70 varsity games. And, and we've got guys that have played five, four, two, uh, 20 some. And so, you know, we're from an experience factor, uh, we were definitely on the backside of that, but I was very proud of our guys. Proud of the effort that the guys gave in the contest against Greenwood. Also, we talked about it last week on the show, the fact that, you know, a little bit of advantage to them. You know their personnel coming in, but a new head coach. And so what they're going to do, they knew what you guys would probably try to do with the scouting and everything, but for you guys not really knowing what they're going to have to do because there wasn't any tape out there, how difficult was that during the game and to be able to make adjustments for you guys? Well, you saw in the clip where Luke makes a steal, and, that, and part of that was – an adjustment we made at halftime because their alignment uh, offensively was different from what we'd seen before. So we were able to on the fly, coach them through it, talk them through it a little bit, and they were able to recognize it fairly well. And so, you know, Monkhouse got loose a couple times, uh, you know, but he shot 10 threes and he right. made four. And so, you know, he misses one, uh, makes another, now all of a sudden, you know, it's he hurt us a little bit, but where he hurt us was at the free throw line. He got the free throw line. That's how he scored all of his points. So he had, uh, you know, 20 points from a free throw line and from threes. And so that, the free throw line is what hurt us from that standpoint. We knew he was going to make some shots. And he's just a good enough player. But, uh, you know, overall, um, you know, we're disappointed in the loss, proud of our effort. But, you know, I, I think about that game a little bit in the sense that um, it, we just had a – just had a possession or two there. Uh, we turned the ball over a couple times more than we need to. We had 16 turnovers. It needs to be 13 or 14. And when you're in a tight contest like that, uh, every possession counts. And that's one of our conversations we've had this week, that when we slow the contest down, we, we make it a possession by possession game, we've got to maximize our possessions and really do a good job on the boards. And, you know, we, we held our own on the boards. We out-rebounded them. Uh, we just had a few too many turnovers, and uh, but overall, uh, the effort was really good. And may get a chance to play them again come sectional time. They are a potential sectional opponent. Then on Friday, Saturday night, Martinsville returns to the John R. Wooden Gym, I guess for the first time this year. You get the home opener against the Columbus North Bulldogs, and that game just seemed to speed by for three quarters. I mean, up and down the court, there weren't a lot of whistles, and when there was, man, it just went back and forth. And so the game kind of went pretty quick for the first three quarters of play. The fourth quarter of play kind of came to a screeching halt with a lot of fouls and, and those kind of things, but really kind of seemed like an up and down contest throughout. Well, it was definitely a, a, a game that was called differently. You know, I thought we got to the basket several times in the first half, and. You know, I, I told one of the officials with two minutes to go in the half that they've, they've got one foul, and they've been pressing us the whole time. And I just can't believe that they play that no-foul defense right. that well. And, 
And so all of a sudden we got two quick calls that were just probably just make up calls at best. But, you know, I think that um, we handled their press. We actually had 12 turnovers in the game. So we, for a team that pressed us as much as they did and were active as they were, we did a much better job on Saturday than we did on Friday against the pressure. Where we struggled, we just couldn't put the ball in the basket. We were 38% from the floor. Uh, we had some good looks. And, uh, you know, then it got down to that possession game in the fourth quarter. And, the, and when you don't make shots, it's just very difficult. And, you know, we had some decent looks. Uh, we, kind of, we altered the way we shot the ball. You know, they had a little bit of length that bothered us. But, uh, and, you know, we had to also contend with that how hard we played on Friday. We had some tired legs come Saturday. And so maybe that factored in a little bit. But, uh, you know, from that standpoint of the game, uh, we, we just didn't shoot the ball as well as we needed to to win it. Didn't shoot it as well. Didn't have Tyler Stead either with the fact that he was, like you said, he had the ankle injury and uh, able to work his way through it on Friday. Um, and usually that's what happens in the next day. That's when the stuff hits you. It's hot, tough to play. So he wasn't able to play either as well Saturday. And that obviously hurts you guys a little bit, especially when he's your tallest guy out on the floor. Well, absolutely. And he's, he's such a good passer against that press. He's, uh, he's a good presence. Uh, he's a big target. Uh, he's a calming factor to a certain degree. You know, he's good enough he can bring the ball up on the dribble if he needs to. But overall, uh, you know, I thought uh, uh, Eli did a, a noble, noble job of getting in there and taking that role and, and, and kind of playing in the spot for a long period of time. That was the most minutes that Eli had played uh, during the course of the season. And, uh, you know, Luke uh, was able to – Luke was cold for the first three quarters and then he – he got hot in the fourth quarter and, and, and kept us in it. And, uh, you know, we've got to be a team where everybody has to contribute as much as they can every night. And, uh, you know, for the first weekend, double weekend, against a good competition, uh, we did a lot of good things. We just honestly came up a little short. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights from the contest against Columbus North on Saturday night at John Arwood Gym. Well, here you see a reverse layup by Eli, and kind of it ties us up. And there's a little bit of length. Reed gets his shot blocked, but Jackson's there to clean it up. And uh, you know, here's a pass in the corner to Blake, and Blake's able to knock it down from Jonathan. And uh, you know, we pressed them too, so it slowed the game down. It was 12 to 12 at the end of the quarter, and here we are getting on the floor, and uh, Blake's able to find the basket uh, after just a scramble. Here's that extra pass that we make. Uh, Jonathan finds Reed in a corner, knocks it down, and you know. So it was a it was a very uh, competitive first quarter. Uh, here's a loose ball we pick up and able to score. Here's a scrap where we find a, uh, a loose ball and, and pass ahead to Reed for a basket. And here's Eli going to the rim, and you know we were able to knock some of those down, and we got stuck there at the end of the first quarter. It was 20 to 19, and we made a defensive mistake at the end of the first first half, I'm sorry, and they were able to put, put themselves up three. And you see us, I mean, we're trading baskets right now, and then uh, there's a possession we don't score, and uh, here's one, and so we cut it to five. And, you know, we just really could never get into that routine where we needed to be, uh, you know, where we got the lead and we could control the ball and get them out of that pressure a little bit. But, you know, here we are at 32 to 30. Um, they make a basket. Uh, here's a here's a drive by Reed, you know, cuts it to 37, 32. Uh, here's a shot by Luke. It's in the fourth quarter to to bring it to five, and you know we just couldn't we just couldn't get inside that four or five point mark for whatever reason. Uh, there you saw Luke getting hitting a three to keep us in it. Jackson hits a three to to tighten it up a little bit, but uh, just the second half the game got away from us a little bit and. A lot of it was just a possession by possession game, and that's one thing we've, like I said earlier, that we've talked about this week. Talked about the possession by possession. You also talked a little bit about the foul situation through the first, the two first two games. Reed had shot 20 free throws. That may be a little bit high, but with the fact that he gets to the how he gets to the rim, uh, maybe not really that surprising. What he shoot maybe one or two in the game against Columbus North. So I think a little bit of a testament to the fact because he was doing some of those same things as well, trying to get to the rim, just wasn't getting some of those calls. Yeah, and it was, just wasn't him. I thought uh, Jonathan got bumped a couple times. Jackson got bumped a couple times. Uh, you know, um, and especially against a team at traps you. You know, you're going, you're going to get a foul here and there. Right. But, uh, you know, overall, in the, in, 
in the second half, they called it a little bit tighter. Um, and, you know, I think that at the same time when they called it a little bit tighter, their zone prevented us from getting to the rim. So it kind of slowed us down in a few, few ways. So we didn't drive. We weren't as, a, as aggressive against the zone as we needed to be in that second half, which kind of hurt us a little bit. And sometimes, too, the legs start to come in, and sometimes you start going for the jump shots instead of trying to go into the lane. At yeah, times. probably yeah, a little bit. And, you know, we, we didn't really have a post presence to throw it in there. Yeah. That hurts us, too, a little bit so that that zone can spread out. But when that zone spreads out, spreads out we need to be able to – sprint into the paint and get in there a little bit more, which we did not do, especially in the fourth quarter. Columbus North gets the victory in the contest. You guys come up this weekend. You've got a Mid-State Conference matchup at home. It'll be the Plainfield Quakers coming to town, and they will uh, bring some size with them as well on Friday night. Well, Gavin Bazo is a uh, 6'11", uh, Division One recruit. He's going to Duquesne. He's, uh, he's an outstanding project uh, prospect. and. You know, he's really come along and developed over the last three or four years. And his brother's a 6'7", uh, sophomore or junior that's uh, uh, not as athletic as his brother, but he's got a little bit more girth to him. And, but, uh, you know, really they are, uh, they've got three players that are good. Obviously, Bazo's uh, an outstanding player. But then they've got Trey Davis who can really shoot it from the outside. And then they've got a, a really good athlete uh, in number 11, Siegfried. And, uh, and he is really good. He's really athletic. So they've got a nice mix of three guys there that, that score 50 out of their 64 points. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got a little belief, a little swagger that they can win some games. They went through a stretch there when Coach Weaver took the job where they struggled a little bit. But they've kind of paid their dues and they've worked through some of it. And they're reaping some of the benefits. They lost at Tri-West in an overtime game and that they had a chance to win. And uh, they come back and they beat uh, Whiteland last weekend, 69-66. And uh, they basically handled the Avon on Saturday night. So they feel pretty good about themselves, 2-1, and 1-0 one, one and oh in the conference. And, you know, the start to conference season for us, we're probably working with Greenwood and Plainfield, probably the two favorites as you'd look at it to start the year. What is Greenwood going to do offensively that you've seen some of the same things that Coach Weaver does, or is it Bazo a little bit mo, a more involved in the offense this year? Well, they're running a secondary break similar to what we do, and then they'll get in their four out one end. Bazo will be the focal point in the post, and then they'll run some uh, interchanges on the outside. They do have about a half dozen half court sets, maybe out of a box or pick and roll action, run a guy off a double on the weak side. So that, you know, they're, they're going to isolate their better players and try to find opportunities for them to shoot the ball. And so we, we really feel like it's a winnable game for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously they have a height advantage against us, but uh, you know, we've, got, we've got a few things we've been working on to help us get through some of that, and that'll help us down the tournament, uh, you know, because obviously in the sectional we'll have to play Center Grove at some point, uh, we think, and, and the, the Trace Jackson Davis kid is 6'7 is six, or 6'8. Six, so these are good experiences for us as we get uh, not only through the season, but help us going into the sectional. Defensively, you saw the last two games that you played, teams that like to put some pressure on you guys. What are we going to see out of playing field defensively on Friday night? Uh, they've been primarily man-to-man -man in the half court, and they, they'll mix it up a little bit. They may trap a little bit. They had three, tra uh, three possessions where they played 2-3 zone against Tri-West, but the rest of the time they've just been man-to-man. -man. Uh, they've gone against some zone, but they've mainly been going against man-to-man -man, uh, defenses. So that's what they've seen for three games for the most part. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think it'll be a great game. I, I just I think our, our scrappiness has been superb and our effort's been really good. Our focus has been good. And, you know, I think uh, we've got some unhealthy kids right now. We've got, we're kind of banged up in a few areas. We've got some sickness going through the team. But we're getting healthier as the week wears on. Uh, earlier in the week, uh, you, know, we had, you know, we had three or four guys that were struggling a little bit from a uh, flu and sickness but uh, right now we're getting a little healthier and I think we'll find our legs come Friday. Getting healthier trying to find the legs on Friday what are you guys gonna have to do keys to the game do you think to be successful on Friday night? Well Bazo, you know he had 26 uh, in one of his contests and you know we can't get have him with 26. Uh, he's gonna score and he's gonna block a few shots and he's gonna get some rebounds he's had three double doubles going into the game so but we can't let him get 26 or 30 points so we've got to keep him in check but uh, we've got to do a really good job on Davis I think he spreads you out and we've got to make sure we find him on the arc and 
he, sh he shoots the ball pretty well. He hadn't shot the ball well this year, but we know he can shoot it. And we got to keep the other kid from getting the paint. He really attacks the basket. He's about 6'3 or 6'4, and he can elevate and get over people. And so I think those are the those two or three kids right there from our standpoint. We've got to do a good job and, you know, make other people beat us, really. And and from a, from our perspective on the offensive side, we've got to make sure we maximize possessions and, and we do a good job and, and uh, slow the contest down. You know, they're averaging 64 points a game. and. And we can't allow them to get in the 60s. We got to we got to make sure they stay in the 50s. And uh, you know we don't have the firepower to just go blow for blow. So we've got to make sure that we shorten the game a little bit and uh, make sure we maximize our possessions and and then defend them well. You know we got to keep Buzo off the glass and he can't have easy putbacks. And uh, we've got to make sure that uh, we make Davis earn his points from the perimeter. And, uh, you know, we've got to also make sure that, uh, as any game, we keep our turnovers down. And so, uh, you know, we did that. We've done that uh, a couple games. And, you know, if you look at those three games we've played, uh, we played, we, we were at 18 at Edgewood. We were at 16 on Friday. We got down to 12. So we've done a good job of, of tightening that up and making, that, making some better decisions. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. We'll see you there on Friday night. Thank you. We look forward to a big crowd. I think that the student section, their theme is – Beach night, I know right. that's always important, and uh, you know we look for a good crowd, and and you know we've got a pretty good little stretch here going into the Christmas holiday. We got another home game on Wednesday right. night as we host uh, Indiana Science and Math, and they called us, wanted to play. We had an opening, so that's how that came about. Then we go on the road to Indian Creek and Eastern Green, and then we come back uh, the Wooden Classic on the 30th. So we've got a little bit of a home stretch here, and we hope to see some. Uh, Artesian fans in the seats. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. Thank you Artesian very much. head coach Kip Staggs here inside Artesian Basketball. Martinsville coming up Friday night at home against the Plainfield Quakers. Get out there and support the Artesians. Then Wednesday, Indiana Math Science comes to town as well before we talk to you again here inside Artesian Basketball. But get out there and support the Artesians. 7.30 varsity tip-off Friday in the John R. Wooden Gym. As always, I'd like to thank the head coach Kip Staggs for coming in. For Coach Staggs, along with the advanced broadcasting class who produced it, I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside. Artesian basketball.